Well, you know what? I've done it for over 50 years, and it, it, you get, you never get cold. In fact, you know, you, you, you still go home at night and you think of maybe one animal you saw that you looked into the eyes. I'll tell you the secret is, you try not to look into their eyes. That's really the honest truth for me. You try not to look into their eyes, and you just try to do your work and get it over with, and you push it back in your mind because you know that if you think too much about it, you won't be able to go on and do more. Because it's just like everybody says, oh, I could never do that. I could never go into the shelter. I would take everything home. But if everybody said that, then nothing would ever be done. So we know better. But now Lisa's been at less period of time, and so you deal with it probably a different way. Well, because I live there, and I pa drive past the animals that wander the street every day. So for me to get past it is I do stop. I do stop. I carry bags of food in my car. I carry water jugs. I carry water bowls. We stop. We feed the dog. The kids in my car, my children, we all get involved because of the area. And I, it makes everybody feel better to go to bed at night thinking, well, at least that dog has a bowl of fresh water. It's not frozen. And as Betty said, we look into their eyes, and that's it. We're, we're hooked, so we do have a personal mission. We do find a dog and take care of it to the end and find it a home, get it adopted out, make sure it has medical care. Um, starvation and emaciation are so prevalent that it, it just breaks our heart. I feel real good about saving those animals. Um, and I think that's maybe what keeps me going is that I'm able to save some and so I know just that little bit is making me feel like I'm making a difference, and that's what keeps you going, you know. And those licks that they give you and the hugs, and <laughs> it's, all, it's all worth it. So okay. a lot of work, but it's very much worth it. Okay. I try not to focus on euthanasia, and the way that I do that is by having the happy moments, sending animals out the door is what keeps me from losing it. Remembering the people that I've met and seeing the animals out in the community that I've adopted to people and getting letters and pictures and hearing about how wonderfully they're doing and making, you know, a difference one dog or cat at a time. I feel that if I stop, then there's so many animals that could have been saved, won't be. Um, I feel though that eventually saving all the animals from the shelter isn't really the answer. It's, you know, getting the word out to people, spay, neuter. Um, it would be nice if we had some stiffer laws. Um, it would be nice if law enforcement, animal control would help follow through with the laws and when people are breaking them, you know, so many people want to just look the other way and not, and not handle the problem. They instead would rather look away and, and just leave it, you know, because it's easier to do that. If people just, you know, if no one wants to deal with the problem, it's not going to go away. As far as, as far as burnout goes, for myself, and I think Lisa might have a different opinion of this at this point, but as far as burnout for me, I think you go until you're done. You, what you try to do is you keep going to the next one for something that you can help that day after something bad has happened. If you let something bad happen and call it a day at that point, it's the wrong thing to do. You have to go on and do something good because if you don't, you're not going to forget about it. So the main thing to do is to get so tired that day that when you go home at night, you just zonk out. And believe me, I always sleep. And, and the only time that I ever wake up in the middle of the night or I can't go to sleep is if I think there's a dog that I wasn't able to find over there that didn't, that is old and maybe it's, uh, uh, it's uh, very, very cold and I want to get it into a, a, another shelter for overnight or something. But otherwise, uh, with this kind of stuff, you sleep, and, and that's the only way, I think. What do you, what do you think, Lisa? Um, maybe because I'm more hands-on, because I take care of the dogs on a day-to-day -day basis. I feed them and water them, and I'll see that some of the neglect with the overpopulation of too many dogs, and, oh, well, that one is okay. It's old anyway, so they neglect it. So then they surrender it. So now I have an older dog that I have to feed and take care of, and hopefully we'll find a home for it. And it gets very discouraging. Um, I don't know, maybe because I haven't been doing it as long as Betty. But it gets discouraging, and I always say, we made a difference. we I got to keep time. We've made a difference. The dog has food and water. We'll find it a home. You know, the thing is, too, there are a lot of people that volunteer, and they go in, and uh, uh, like a spay-neuter clinic, and it's absolutely wonderful, and everything is good, and you don't lose a dog, and everything is absolutely, and then they go home at night, and that's it. 
but it's the day-to-day -day things. It's just like at the shelter, the day-to-day -day things. And you know what? In the animal welfare business, it's not just the sadness with animals. It's the sadness with people. The people that bring their animals there and don't really want to, but really have to. And we have people, too, where we're working right now. Um, they can't afford to do more with their animals, or uh, they really do feel bad. I, there, I have had many people mm -hmm. that when we've tried to save their animal, and I call them back, and, and they have to hang up because they're crying. And, and it, I can stop there a week, you know, a week later, and, and it still is a very, very sad subject. And so the, the people is... People are just as much a part of the sadness in animal welfare as, as the animals are. And frankly, my opinion is that people, if they don't like people, they're not going to be as good in animal welfare as if they don't like people. Because the people that like people and animals then have it all together. And that's where it really all comes in. You, know, you have to feel sorry for a lot of these people that are under the situation that they are. And if you, if you get so cynical that you don't face that, then you're wrong. For the most part, I, I'm, the emotions are good. You know, they're, they're, if I cry, it means that, I, you know, it's a good feeling because I know I've saved some of the animals that are down there. Thank God I don't have to actually walk into a shelter to pick the dog, which one I'm going to save. I'm able to look at the pictures on Pet Finder at the shelter that, that we, you know, have been helping. Um, and we kind of just find out a little bit about their temperaments and, you know, uh, feel if they're adoptable or not, and we kind of go from there. And that's how, you know, some that have those wonderful temperaments, and so many do, there's so many that, that are so deserving of homes, but we try to pick the ones that we feel that will be more adoptable that we take. And not to say that we don't take some older dogs or the black dogs or, you know, those dogs, they do, they, they get chosen too, but they're, you know, we, we only have a few that we can take so you got to make make the selections and you got to pick the ones that you feel are going to be adopted. I keep doing what I'm doing because I have an emotional attachment and I feel a mission to make a difference and I get to do that every day. We'd like to thank you for joining us today and hope that you have a better understanding of pet overpopulation. And we just want to remind everybody, please spay and neuter your pet. Happy Tales was brought to you by Oshkosh Area Humane Society and the following local underwriters. Lakeside Animal Hospital, 235-5040. Provident Financial Consultants, LLC, 230-6898. West Business Services, 920-997-6927. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>